Covering the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, you spend a lot of time with young soldiers, barely out of high school, who are asked to do the toughest work the country asks of them. There are so many of them now, fighting two wars back to back. You guys have fun. For most, this job is not so much a career as it is a tour of duty. They just hope to survive, make it back home, and begin the next chapter in their lives. Back on base, they prepare for a transition to civilian life. A generous GI Bill, with billions of dollars for education, is designed to ease their way. Here, soldiers take college courses from a variety of schools, earning credits towards a hoped-for degree. I do want to get my bachelor's before I get out. Now, that's one of my long-term goals. Right now, I'm working my associate's degree with CTC. I'm going to transfer to UMUC and get my four-year. Uh, I'm going to transfer over to Strayer. Strayer. That caught my attention. It's one of those for-profit, mostly online colleges. Were there other schools that you were looking at at the same time you were looking at Strayer? Uh, yes, I was looking at University of Phoenix. Last year, I investigated the for-profit sector, including the industry giant, University of Phoenix. At that time, it was a $6 billion a year industry with little government oversight. This is an online university. This is what it looks like. Our report focused on the length schools go to attract students. Are you thinking about going back to school? Their accreditation problems and the staggering amounts of student debt. Are the students and the U.S. taxpayers getting a good value. Soon after our report, Congress held hearings to investigate. Quickly, they became alarmed by how much GI Bill money was going to for-profit colleges. All of a sudden, we found that there was a huge spike up in the amount of military money going to these schools. A uh, 600% increase in just a couple of years, huge increase. And so we started looking at that, and uh, what we found is just really disturbing. What disturbs Harkin and other critics is that more than a third of all GI Bill dollars are ending up at for-profit colleges. It's a disproportionate share, and it appears to be growing. Overall spending on veterans' education went from less than $5 billion in 2009 to nearly $10 billion in 2010, and a lot of that is driven by for-profit colleges and their uh, wooing of veterans. Veterans like Mike DiGiacomo, who dreamed of pursuing a career in computer animation when he left the Army. He had learned about a for-profit school, Gibbs College in Boston, from a TV ad. When he spoke to a recruiter there, he was told they had connections to some of the biggest Hollywood studios. They did say they had connections to get into Pixar. Pixar was pretty much the, the stereotypical dream of all the uh, animation students. So I thought that I would be able to live comfortably and support a family and and do what I loved. The school refutes it, but DiGiacomo claims Gibbs never provided proper computer animation training. Nobody in my family had gone to college. We didn't know that there was bad colleges out there. We didn't know there was, you know, that if, if it advertised on TV that it wasn't a good school. We didn't know that kind of stuff. DiGiacomo enrolled at another for-profit school, but soon realized he had run through much of his GI benefits and tens of thousands of dollars in student loans to make ends meet. He dropped out before he got the degree he was after. I joined the military. I even risked my life jumping out of planes. And I wanted to go to college. Honestly, I regret going to college for the rest of my life. It's an honor to serve those who serve our country. The average veteran is bombarded with for-profit college ads. I wasn't sure, coming out of uh, the military, what my plans would be. A Google search for GI Bill turns up GIBill.com, a site which directs soldiers only to for-profit schools. Even organizations like AMVETS, one of the nation's oldest veterans' associations, is plastered with for-profit college ads. What's happened here is that there's so much money at stake for the for-profit schools that they have hired on substantial numbers of recruiters to go after these vets. So uh, you find many of these schools 
Kaplan University of Phoenix with hundreds, literally hundreds of recruiters going right after these veterans. They want you to look for the individual's pain and then you paint the picture of how much better their life can be because they've actually gone to Ashford to get a uh, degree. A former Marine, Wade Cutler, was hired as a recruiter at the for-profit college, Ashford University. Ashford has over 9,000 military students enrolled today. That's a 2,000% increase in the last three years. They hire veterans like Cutler to gain the trust of GIs over the phone. If a military person is actually speaking with someone that's been in the military, there's a certain lingo or a certain slang that they're associated with and it's very common with them. Give me an example of that. Well, I mean, if it's a Marine, then of course I would immediately say to them, Ura Rami, Marine, or I would say simplify, and they would readily know that you were in the military or that you had prior service. And so it's easy to establish that trust. I mean, if you wanted to keep your job, you had a, a certain number of students you needed to enroll. Brad Seliga, a former National Guardsman, also recruited for Ashford. You'd have these meetings maybe on Monday and say, what's your projected number for this week? You know, everybody goes around the table. I think I can enroll X amount of students, maybe three students or five students. And then at the end of the week, you went over, um, did you make that number? Did you exceed that number? If you didn't make that number, what was the reason? I was only an enrollment advisor for a short period of time. Cutler said he tried to make his numbers until one day he became disillusioned by how many vets he would sign up, only to see them drop out. Some of those people, they don't have the regiment, they don't have the discipline, they don't have the ability to actually go forward. Was there any time that the university said, look, if you think that the soldier is not ready for this kind of study, don't sign them up? No, they don't say that. What do they say? They say everybody is a good fit. The uh, military is a perfect fit. Ashford's parent company, Bridgepoint Education, says Cutler and Seliga's remarks run contrary to the school's policy, but they declined our request for an interview. Hello? Hi, is Steven there? Yeah, it's him. Frontline acquired telephone recordings of recruiters from Westwood College, a for-profit school based in Denver, Colorado. I get excited when I have military students because you know, they have the discipline, they have the drive, they have the motivation. The recruiters tell the military applicants they'll receive special treatment. Oh yeah, okay. we're on military.com as a military-friendly school. Instruct them how to maximize their GI Bill benefits. The GI was actually bumped up. Um, we have our own military department here that works with our military students. And share job and salary prospects. Right out of the gate, it looks like you have the ability to make anywhere between seventy-two to $82,000. What do you want to do? What color is that? It was a Westwood recruiter who told Jason Longmore, a Navy vet, that he could earn a bachelor's degree in just three years. After his wife's MS caused her to lose her job, Longmore needed to get one quickly. It felt like this was the right path, especially with my situation with my wife and my baby and, and a whole new life, a whole new life starting. This is going to be the right foot to set on and, and, and continue. But six months into his program, he learned from a prospective employer that his Westwood degree wasn't worth much. So if I was applying for jobs, I went against somebody with a construction manager degree from Colorado State University, and I had my degree from Westwood College, I wouldn't be on par with that same person, although that's what I felt I was supposed to be getting through the education that they were giving me. And when Longmore went to transfer to a state school, he hit another snag. His credits were no good. We asked Westwood about this, and they told us they never made any promises about credits. They pointed out Longmore had initialed the box that read, Westwood College makes no guarantee of credit transfer. Longmore says he was fooled. Me and my wife both asked multiple times, does that mean that their credits don't transfer? He said, don't worry, everything will transfer. We had to put that in there because every college has credits that won't transfer, so it has to be in there, it's fine. If they would have told me directly that uh, they wouldn't transfer, I would not have gone to Westwood College. Too often at for-profit colleges, the emphasis is on recruiting the student, bringing them in the front door, getting the access to the federal money, and then leaving them to fend for themselves. And Dan Golden, an investigative reporter for Bloomberg News, has written extensively about some of the most extreme military recruiting efforts at for-profit colleges. I went to a Marine base in North Carolina, and I found that one of the for-profit colleges was sending a recruiter to the Wounded Warriors barracks, where she was signing up uh, brain-injured Marines who uh, even had difficulty remembering what courses they were taking. And it's quite a widespread phenomenon. Take the case of Sergeant Chris Pansky. 
He always planned to return to college after he came home from Iraq. He had joined the Army in 2003. Two years later, he was promoted to sergeant and became a squad leader charged with protecting fuel trucks driving through battle zones west of Baghdad. He served there for nine months until one day a car bomb attack inflicted a traumatic brain injury, or TBI. I started getting moody, angry. I was so depressed that uh, I did become suicidal. I was hospitalized and they diagnosed me with PTSD. Pansky's story was first reported by Dan Golden in Bloomberg News. Pansky had been drawn to the for-profit school Art Institutes. Creativity is a powerful thing. Art Institutes has over 5,000 vets currently enrolled. And creating careers Pansky says he was attracted by all the possibilities, but was worried he wouldn't cut it. One of the very first things I told him that I had PTSD, and she said, oh, you'll do fine. We'll take care of you, you're not, not a problem. You know, you're good, don't worry about it, we'll take care of you. I looked at what they had. They had a really good online photography course. It was a Bachelor of Science, so I was a degree, photography, okay. And about a day later, I get a phone call, you're approved, you're in school. It's like, okay. The school would collect over $70,000 of Pansky's GI Bill money and other federal funds, but he was struggling to keep up with his coursework. After getting into the class, there wasn't a whole lot of help. Even though he would email them, it would take him, them, you know, days, maybe even a week before they got back to him. Then the school flunked him. It just didn't work. It wasn't working right. I went to see him in his home in, in Southern Virginia. And I'll never forget, he showed me some holes in the wall near the computer that he did his course on. He explained that he had gotten so frustrated that with his inability to uh, deal with the courses that he had punched those holes in the wall. Here was a veteran who had given his health in the defense of his country, and the taxpayers were footing the bill for him to go to college, and yet the money was not serving any noticeable purpose except to distress him. The Art Institute say they offered Pansky extensive tutoring services at no charge, but they declined our request for an interview. Veterans have been a growth market for your schools. They've been a growth market for all of higher education. We brought our concerns you know, to Harris Miller, uh, until recently the industry's chief Washington representative. The for-profits spend more on marketing. Yes, they do. Outreach. Yes. How does that contribute to the fact that they're signing up at a greater rate than they are to the other schools? We believe, based on conversations we've had with the various veterans organizations, that they believe that their members are very well equipped to understand all their options. You're saying the veterans are well advised? Absolutely. They know what they're getting into? Absolutely. They're not subject to sales pitches that come too fast and furious and misinform them? They're not allowed to be misinformed. It's against the law. In it's addition, against the law. That doesn't mean that it doesn't get done. I'm saying it's against the law. The agency that helps enforce that law is the Department of Veterans Affairs. The VA's Keith Wilson oversees the GI Bill. Have you taken action against any uh, school for over-aggressive pursuit of veterans? We do. Uh, it's, it's not, um, it doesn't happen a lot, I guess is what I would say. But there are situations where that does occur, and, and we do have the authority to do that, and we've done it. The VA couldn't tell us how often. We could only find one recent example. Are you worried that veterans are not fully informed about what choice they're making? No, I believe veterans are informed about the decisions they're making. And we're always working to get them better information. But if a veteran goes to your site, will they find rankings and comparisons and the kind of information that the FDA publishes, for instance, on food packaging about content? Not on the GI Bill site yet. We're working in that direction, but right now we don't have that, no. This interview was conducted in late January. Do you think there's some urgency here about getting uh, more information out there to veterans? There is. Uh, then, this spring, as we were finishing this segment, the VA finally launched a new feature on its website, providing the kind of information we were asking about, including this statistic that shows that graduation rates at for-profit schools stand at just 28 percent, half of what they are at traditional schools. We said to the VA, is it working? 
is the money we're putting in the GI Bill that's going to schools, uh, for-profit schools as well as public schools, is that money really working to put these uh, people to work, to give them the jobs that they need? And unfortunately, the results were discouraging. They just basically give the money to the students and say, goodbye. They don't care where they go or what school they attend to. They do no accounting on that. They do no supervision of that. And they don't track it. Tracking what happens to veterans going to for-profit schools isn't easy. But one important measure is jobs. Some for-profit graduates compete well on the job market. But according to a company called Payscale, graduates from the for-profit colleges we covered earn on average 12 to 15 percent less than graduates at public state schools. These people are putting their lives on the line to defend our values and defend the way our country exists. They shouldn't be treated like this. They should be treated better. Ted Daywalt, a Navy vet, is the president of Vet Jobs, the largest job listing site for veterans. Daywalt recently polled employers on how they value for-profit degrees. Human resource managers were telling me that if they have two people with similar work backgrounds and one had a degree from an online school versus a, a well-known uh, brick and mortar school, they would go to the brick and mortar school. How many uh, human resource folks have told you that? Uh, in the last week, because I've been calling a bunch of them, probably about 30. You run into any who say, no, I don't make any distinction? No. Today, Mike DiGiacomo is working at a retail copy center. His wages have been garnished, and he's having trouble paying back his private student loans, which he says have carried interest rates as high as 18%. Look, these veterans get this benefit one time. It's a one-time shot. And if they don't get a quality education and something that can really help them with their lives, they'll never get it again. Shortly before this broadcast, the Art Institutes wrote to Frontline to say they've readmitted Sergeant Pansky. But he's already run through more than half of his GI Bill benefits and has had to borrow another 15000 to make ends meet. He says he worries it won't be enough to finish the $82,000 program and get his degree. And Jason Longmore? He's now enrolled at the University of Colorado as a civil engineering student. Tuition costs half of what he was paying at Westwood, but he's had to start over. None of his 52 credits from Westwood was accepted. From spending my GI Bill money that I worked hard for in the beginning to get, without thinking that I was on a track to be successful, and then finding out that with all the money that I had spent and all the time that I had spent was for naught, was pretty depressing. Longmore says all that has made it impossible to afford his home. He's fixing it up to sell. I feel like I upheld my end of the bargain. I don't feel like it was upheld on the other end. This and other Frontline programs, visit our website at pbs.org slash frontline. Frontline's The Child Cases is available on DVD. To order, visit shoppbs.org or call 1-800-PLAY-PBS. Frontline is also available for download on iTunes.